Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing about module 2 of a design of machine elements 2. So, mainly here we will be discussing about gears. So, as you are aware, uh, you would have gone through the syllabus, you would have observed that module 2 and module 3 where we will be discussing four major types of gears. So, what are the types of gears and what is gear and what materials uh, can be used for making gears, its applications. So, everything we will be discussing in module 2 and module 3. So, and uh, similarly we will be solving uh, a lot of uh, problems based on uh, all four types of design. But before moving to those four types, uh, we will be discussing, uh, you know, like uh, generally the nomenclature of the designs and even uh, uh, the purpose and even if any uh, uh, failure chances are there means how to overcome so all those basic informations will be discussed here so in this video we will be discussing uh, about uh, general classification of gears the uh, materials and uh, a simple uh, uh, you know like a uh, um, design based information so uh, mechanical drives we can call uh, the gears as the mechanical drives so a drives the transmit power by means of friction so generally we can call it as like a belt drives and rope drives but a drive that transmit power by means of engagement we call that as a chain drive and gear drive so the selection of a proper mechanical drive for a given application depends upon number of factors such as center distance velocity ratio shifting arrangement maintenance and cost now moving to the gears so we know that uh, it is completely uh, different from the, the previous one with the belts and uh, chains what we discussed uh, because when we speak about the chains where the sprockets are used but almost this uh, gears uh, is almost similar to that one. So we can define the gears are a toothed wheels which transmit power and motion from one shaft to another by means of successive uh, engagement of teeth. And uh, these uh, gear drives offer uh, many advantages over the chain or uh, belt drives. So what are all they? We will uh, discuss here in detail. Basically, a gear drive is a positive drive and the velocity ratio remains constant. There will not be any change in the velocity ratio and even if I change the uh, in between, uh, if I change the stress or if I change or include uh, any other uh, additional length and all those things, but because of that also the velocity ratio will not change. And the center distance between the shaft is relatively small. Uh, which result in uh, compact uh, construction uh, which is uh, you know like the major uh, problem with other types of drives but in case of the gear drives uh, which is uh, very very important and very very useful and uh, this gear drives uh, transmit very large power which is beyond the range of uh, belt or chain drives so I need not to say this because already we discussed the belt drives and uh, some of the basic information of the chain drives so uh, and, uh, after solving the problem also we understood uh, the power capacity and the next point is uh, these uh, gear drives can uh, transmit motion at very low velocity uh, which is not at all possible with the uh, belt drives. And uh, moving to the next point which is very very important that is the efficiency of the gear drives is very high that is up to 99% in case of this per gear. And uh, a provision can be made in the gear box for the gear shifting by just changing the velocity ratio over the wide range. And even this uh, uh, gears is, uh, is also having uh, some disadvantages that is uh, the gear uh, drives are costly and the maintenance cost is also very high because uh, it is providing a lot uh, I mean a uh, large power and even uh, uh, the compact uh, setup all those things but still it is uh, a little expensive because uh, the the type of material what we are choosing for the manufacturing of the gears uh, it is uh, a little expensive so that is why uh, the, these gear drives are costly and even uh, the maintenance since it is directly uh, the gears will be having physical contact with each other so definitely the friction will be there that leads to wear and tear and finally failure so proper maintenance should be uh, done and the manufacturing process for the gears are complicated and highly specialized so even in the conventional machining process these gears cannot be manufactured because uh, the design itself is highly complicated so we should go with some non-traditional machining process it may be a, a chemical machining process it may be some laser beam whatever the thing but even the making itself is very complicated. So that is why uh, the process of gears are complicated and even it is uh, highly expensive too. And these gear drives require careful attention for lubrication and cleanliness. That's what uh, since uh, uh, in the first point we discussed uh, during the maintenance, uh, uh, you know like some duration uh, 
after some duration we need to uh, clean it properly and we need to provide uh, proper lubrication and afterwards we need to clean that because of the fine chips everything will be present over it so all those things we should be uh, taken care otherwise uh, it will uh, it will lead to the the failure or there's some uh, uh, sticky kind of the you know like a component and this gear drive also requires uh, precise uh, alignment of the shaft so the uh, shaft axis uh, uh it should be set in the proper angle then only uh, you know like the proper application what we are looking for uh, we are looking for will takes place and here you can able to see some of the examples of uh, you know like the tooth wheel that is the gears what we discussed now moving to the actual topic related to this video that is classification of gears so we can classify the gears uh, based on uh, you know like many things the first one is uh, based on the position of the shaft means uh, parallel perpendicular and non intersection we can classify and if we are classifying based on velocity means uh, three major uh, uh, you know like a categories are like low medium and high if you are classifying based on type of gearing means we have internal gearing and external gearing and uh, position of your teeth means a straight inclined and curved teeth and based on this classification we have further classified into four major types spur gears helical gears bevel gears and worm gears spur gear helical gear bevel gear and worm gear spur gear helical gear bevel gear and worm gear this is the thing i am just highlighting so what is spur gear spur gear are a type of cylindrical gear with shafts that are parallel and coplanar and the teeth that are straight and oriented parallel to the shafts so they are arguably uh, the simplest and the most common type of gear and it is easy to manufacture and suitable for wide range of applications and helical gears are similar to the spur gears except that their teeth are cut at an angle to the hole that is the axis rather than straight and parallel to the hole like the teeth of a spur gear so the line of contact between the two teeth is not parallel to the teeth but inclined this ensures a gradual engagement of teeth from one end to other tooth rather than the sudden engagement as in case of the spur gear so this gradual engagement makes the gears function smoothly without much noise and bevel gears are gears where the axis of the two shafts intersects and the tooth bearing faces of the gears themselves are conically shaped so these bevel gears are of most often mounted on shafts uh, that are 90 degrees apart but can be designed to work at other angles as well the pit surface of the bevel gears is equal and moving to the last type that is the worm gears so worm gears are usually used when uh, large speed reductions are needed so the reduction ratio is determined by the number of starts of the worm and the number of uh, teeth on the worm gear so but worm gears having a uh, sliding contact uh, which is uh, quite but tends to produce a heat and have a, a relatively low transmission efficiency so we will continue the remaining things in the next video because uh, we will not get time to discuss in detail about all those things and speaking about the materials uh, which is uh, not mentioned in the ppt but i can explain off so the the, the major materials what we are using for making of these gears Uh, usually like uh, the hardened materials only used and particularly with more carbon content any alloys with more carbon content is uh, recommended like high hardened steel is usually preferred and even uh, based on the applications if it is like a uh, uh, automobile purpose again the gear material will be different or if it is for aircraft purpose again the gear uh, material will be different and if it is like a, a high temperature related application again the material will be different so the material uh, you know like uh, uh, the more carbon content is uh, compulsory with any material and along with that uh, based on the application whether it is uh, uh, you know like a good in resisting heat or good in resisting uh, you know like a different temperatures or a different pressure so all those things uh, we need to uh, consider so when we discuss uh, the spur gear and helical gear problems where we will uh, come to know like uh, what is the exact material which is recommended for making this thank you